Hello, in this video we will look at dynamic topology in Blender. Now dynamic topology is a recently added new feature of Blender at the time of recording and it is perhaps one of the most groundbreaking features of Blender in terms of 3D modeling in recent times. So why is this good compared to the normal sculpting method of Blender? Well, the normal sculpting of Blender has a couple of limitations. For example, if I just select that and go into sculpt mode, you'll notice that first of all, we haven't added a multi-res modifier. The sculpting mode only becomes effective when you have lots and lots of vertices to play with, and the multi-res modifier does that for us. However, having a lot of vertices does slow down your computer, uh, even though the models produced can look really, really good. And sometimes it may not be a good idea because it sometimes tends to create so much detail in areas that we don't need a detail. For example, we might need a lot of detail in the eyes, but perhaps not so much detail in the cheeks. So we're wasting a lot of vertex data in that. The second limitation is it is not really possible to add form to your uh, model using the normal sculpt mode. For example, we can't extend out arms or a head or legs or any other kind of um, external form to our, our 3D object. I mean, you could sort of use a blob or a draw or a snake hook tool to sort of force out um, arms and legs, but it definitely won't look right because it just uses the existing vertices that are already on your model and just you know, stretches them. And that's not really a good thing because you lose resolution by doing that. Dynamic topology has made all of this a whole lot easier and as an artist it gives you a lot a lot of freedom and power all these limitations are diminished how do we enable dynamic topology easy just start with a cube don't have to do anything don't have to add any multi modifier nothing just go straight into sculpt mode open up blender go straight into sculpt mode then in the dynatopo section that you see in the sculpt mode just tick that box that's it dynamic topology is now enabled so if I extend that, we can see that we have a few more settings to work with. So dynamic topology works by dynamically adding more vertices in real time as you paint your object. So if I just increase the size of my brush and I just show you by painting this object, you can see that these vertices have been added in real time as I painted it. So if I go into edit mode, you can see that these vertices have been added by my paintbrush. We haven't wasted that much vertices on all the other stuff, so we save a lot of memory, and we've only created the vertices in the areas that we want to create them. So that gives us a lot of power. So that now enables us to do things like adding arms. So I can use a snake hook and drag out arms. Oops. And as you can see, in real time, we can create form pretty easily. I mean, you can try this in the normal sculpt mode. You'll find that you have a lot of headaches working with the default sculpt mode by trying to do this. So this has given us a lot of freedom. This literally means that you can start with a cube and end up with a very high detailed, high poly, super realistic, awesome looking 3D character. It is possible. I mean, there are examples online everywhere. That's pretty much all I have to teach you regarding that. I mean, you're free to go away and sculpt whatever you want with it. It's power to you as a 3D artist. There's not much I can advise in terms of sculpting. Now it's up to you as the creative artist to come up with your own models. But there is one more thing that I can teach you though, is are these, uh, these settings here. First of all, this is the easiest one, smooth shading. It talks on smooth and rough shading. So by smooth shading, you can sort of see your object as a more true to life clay model. Uh, you can also symmetrize your model. Currently it's already being symmetrized because whenever I paint here you can see it being reflected already on the other side. Uh, that's not part of the Dynatobo, that's part of the default sculpting mode where I have the X mirror enabled. But if you don't have that enabled, uh, basically, you know, whatever I paint on this side, so let's just say I created a very blobby looking ear, I can uh, symmetrize that very quickly. Let's say from plus X to minus X, and there we go. It's not really that useful, it just basically snaps it from one side to the other. Most times I don't use this, I just stick with the, the default um, uh, sculpt symmetry tool that's created by the, the normal sculpt mode. But the most important one is the detail size. 
What this means is how closely bunched your vertices will be. 12 pixels means that wherever you paint, the distance between the vertices will be 12 pixels. So increasing the size actually creates less detail. As you can see here, we lost a lot of detail here. The vertices are more wide gapped. And decreasing the size to say 2 pixels adds so much detail. Oops. Uh, let's just change from snake hook to clay. Add so much detail. So we can see all that detail being added. Let's just smooth it out. So this, so this obviously contributes to very, very high poly models. So using the detail size, you can basically control areas where you want to paint out the very high poly areas and areas where you want to keep the, the poly count low. So make sure you increase the size if you want low poly and decrease the size if you want very high poly. You want, you want to you know, really sculpt out the, the finer details of your object. Sometimes you might find that your model gets stuck and it, it, it starts to look um, very, um, it starts to become a little bit slow and clunky to work with. Then all you have to do is just press optimize and you'll find that suddenly Blender has made um, everything quick again. So that's pretty much all I have to say about this video. Freedom and power to you as a 3D artist to create whatever model you like. This is not my best model, I know it's basically created in, in two seconds, but uh, you can definitely create really, really awesome models using dynamic sculpting. So yeah, I hope you had fun and you learned something useful. Keep blending and I hope to see you in the next video.